continue. And we are off. Um, welcome, everybody, to episode number two of Kicking and Streaming. Today, we have a very special guest dressed for the occasion, Jaime Segura, and a very good friend of mine. Um, so, yeah, please introduce yourself. Aaron, how you doing? Good friend. Um, my name is Jaime Segura, like uh, you try to say. It. I'm not <laughs> going to blame on your pronunciation. Uh, I'm from Argentina, and I was lucky to meet Aaron over in the States. Um, so here we are. I'm very, very pleased to be on your podcast. And hopefully everyone watching will enjoy what we talk about. Yeah, yeah. I actually remember the first time we, we met each other. I was down in, down in Florida. I was a freshman and you were, you were a senior. Um, before my lease started in the apartment, I had 10 days of, of being homeless. I was homeless for 10 days and Jaime took me in. Um, I had a big double bed, my own bedroom. And little did I know that it was actually your room that you gave me and you slept down in the basement. So ever since then, um, me and Jaime have been, have been really, really close friends. Um, but it's great to have you on the, on the episode. Um, and you're from Buenos Aires, Thanks. Argentina. Um, why don't you talk about your, your soccer journey as a, as a kid, like your early, earliest memory? Yeah, um, well, my earliest memory, I'll say, uh, it's not that I have such a vast experience as a footballer, you know, it's not that I, that I come far so much, but um, I started playing very young when I was like two or three, you know, Argentina, very, very football oriented or soccer yeah. oriented uh, country <laughs> where, you know, almost everyone plays football or soccer and then you always have a ball at your feet. Um, so I started playing there, uh, it was more like a school level. And then when I grew up, one of my dad's friend who, who was running actually a club in Mexico, we asked him like, yeah, we, I want to keep growing in football. So he took me to a, to a training uh, center where they had like three agent players, let's say, who didn't belong to any club. Uh, so I started playing there. And then they took me to a club that I tried out for a very short time, like a month or something like that. And then right after that, uh, which is something we can talk about as well, is by the time I tried out for the club, the team, we, it was under 16 or 17, sorry. And the team started training in the mornings. So, and it had nothing to do with school, that club. So okay. if I wanted to get into that club, I should, I, I would have to like quit school or change school or go into a night school or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's something that it's very, uh, very sad. I think about the, yeah. the how it's, it works. It's a, very, it's a very complicated situation because you don't want to give up education. You don't want to, give up soccer you want to play at the highest level so I'm yeah. sure it was a very and very tough decision exactly and and mostly for like in a country like Argentina or many other third world countries where football is the salvation you know like like mm -hmm. in Argentina and probably 95 percent of football players come from very very poor families and they mm -hmm. want to play professional to save their families and get them out of yeah. there so when they put you in this position that you have to quit school or keep playing well you know, like most of the kids that don't have a good background or a good family, then they say, okay, this is my only choice. However, there are some options where you can study and play, but uh, it's not the same, you know, it's yeah. not the same. So, um, so when I started there and then they said, okay, you can stay the whole year for tryout. And then right after that, then like I contact someone from the U.S., uh, they told me like, yeah, there's a, this chance that you could come play for college and blah, blah, blah. They explained me all the process that I guess we're going to talk about it now. Um, yeah, yeah, so why, why, why did you decide to study in the States? Before everyone knows, Jaime spent four years in Coyce University in, in West Palm Beach. But why, why, why was that? Why did you choose that option? Yeah, well, it's a little bit of what I was saying before. You know, like I, I wanted to find the balance between the studies and the football because... I mean, of course, I was an, an, an amazing talent, but I knew that um, I wanted to keep playing and I wanted to keep studying as well. You know, I, I knew the studies were something that uh, nobody was going to be able to take from me, you know, with mm -hmm. footballs, and, and we'll talk about it later. But uh, I mean, uh, so this opportunity that I could mix both, you know, at the same time, and, and something that you, you, you know as well, very well, is that... Um, people have the misconception of, okay, but if I'm playing Argentina or whatever I am and I go to the US, I'm going to go a step back, you know, I'm going to... Yeah, absolutely. My I, I can talk about that even a little bit, like, 
I obviously played with Drotter and Bowers and good teams back at home and a lot of people thought the level go down. Like it does there's so many amazing players in college and, and the yeah. way the, the college like the way the US is run right now, if you're not ready to be a professional soccer player at eighteen, nineteen, the only route is to spend four years in college yeah. hoping that you get better and then go on onto the pros. So yeah. like back at home, back in England, like a young player could be anything between 17 to 20 but over in America a young player is 20 to 23 like that's yep. that's the, the gap right there so um so being able to mature for myself physically and mentally um I think I needed to, to spend four years in college um to grow into myself and, and, and that those type of things it's a huge step I think and, and also going back a little <laughs> bit to how the system works in Argentina the thing is, so let's, let's take the case that I would have decided to quit school when I was 17, okay? And, and I had to finish it on an online program or something like that, or that I didn't finish at all, or that my parents weren't demanding it. And so I kept playing football. And then maybe when I was under 20, so on the reserve teams, they tell me like, listen, we're not going to sign you a contract. And there you are with 20 years old, 21 years old, with no contract at all. You haven't finished high school, or maybe if you did, that's the only thing. So... There are some exceptions that they, they study and they play, but you also need a good background, you know, you need a good economic background because, you know, if you have to work and then you have to study and then you have to train, it's extremely hard, you know, and, and, yeah. and it, they, when, they really, when a club release you, they, they don't care what happens with you, you know, if oh, they yeah, gave you a or not, you know, they, yeah, yeah. that's it, you're the out. Next guy up, yeah, it's, it's yeah. the next guy up, so that, 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 yeah. that's professional soccer for you, it can be black and white at times um yeah. but yeah looking looking back on your college experience um obviously you're in west palm beach florida one of the better locations amazing place um, how, how was your college experience overall well i think that you mentioned now west palm beach I, I don't think i realized until year two or maybe maybe year three where i really was you know like i, I started yeah. considering i say okay now I, re I think I'm taking into consideration that I'm, in a pl I'm living in a place where probably everyone in the world is saving the whole year to come for holidays for 10 days, you know, Absolutely. and I'm, and, and I'm, I'm like lucky enough to be studying, to be playing here and everything that comes with it at college, you know, like meeting people from all over the world, uh, you know, actually maybe when where I was playing in Argentina, I was in my team, I was one of the better players. And then you come in and you're like, oops, it's not anymore like that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a great experience. And, and, and I, I think I, if I could, I will do it again, like four years again, because mm -hmm. not, not because I work on this or anything, but I mean, it's, it's, it was a great experience, you know, and then West Palm beach, um, it's a, it's a great weather. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some, most of the time, you know, you only really cons like uh, appreciate it when you don't have it anymore. So I was lucky enough to appreciate it uh, at least half of my career, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Same myself. I only realized how lucky I was to be in such a good spot when I left. Um, waking up in a freezing cold yeah. Sunday morning in, in Pennsylvania or whatever I wake up on a, on a hammock in, ah, in exactly. West Palm Beach, Florida. Yeah. So. I mean, there's, yeah. there's just pros and cons to every situation, but exactly. um, I do want to get back down to West Palm Beach. All the lads are still there, um, my friends from, from college and um, those type of things. But yeah, like, would you, looking back on your college career, would you have done anything differently? Like, would you have transferred or would you have gone to a different school or um, so, those sort of things? I mean, I've always thought, I, I asked myself this question so many times and and I, and I don't think I'll come to, to a conclusion yet because like I lived so much in my last two years, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. that I'm like, well, you came in in my senior year, you know, so if I would have transferred, we would have never met. And True. So like that would have been bad for you anyways. But I mean, <laughs> um, so what happened at Kaiser was that when I went in, it was Northwood University which yeah. um, it was a school that was the main campus is um, in Michigan. It's an NCAA school, Division II school. And they had another campus in Texas and our campus in West Palm Beach. And they, they shut down the Texas one and West Palm Beach was the next one uh, to be shut down. So this guy, Dr. Kaiser, came in, bought the university. And at the beginning, it was very uncertain what was going to happen. So 
many of us were like, well, okay, I think this is the time for us to transfer. Maybe I started looking at schools in New York, you know, okay, I had enough in Florida, I want to transfer. But then it didn't happen. And then I spoke to my teammates and then um, to my coach as well. And then I realized, okay, we'll give it a try. And then it was, it was a great decision, you know, great decision. Yeah. So if I would have changed something is... Uh, well, you know myself that I, that I like to train and everything, but it would have been even more, you know, like maybe at your freshman year, you're like, okay, this is the beginning. I have some more time, but don't take anything for granted, you know, like every day in and out, like get your training, follow the diet. You'll have time to party later and everything like the, the season goes like this so quick, you know, and yeah, then yeah. If you're not ready. It's like, boom, you're out of it, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the the season is only three three months long in yeah. in college, so you 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 want to be fit. So if you're injured for a week, you miss three games. You know what yeah. I mean? So you want to take care of your body. You want to take care of of everything, so you don't miss any games. Like I wasn't yeah. eligible for the four, six, seven games in Florida. I, I remember and it, it hurt. You know what I mean? The same. Of course. Putting all the hard work in in preseason, uh, sacrificing a lot of things by moving over to the states, and then missing six, seven games, like watching all the lads out there. And um, it's obviously I wanted to play. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, it's something that I feel as though the college system, they actually think they're on the way to making it a little bit longer, probably five, six was, months, but who yeah. knows? You, know, you just don't know what, when the timeline is or, or anything was, like that. Yeah, I was going to mention that, that we can discuss whether the schedule is well organized or not, which I think yeah. we, both, we both agree is not, that I think it should be, if it's possible, how's the mate? Eh? Yeah, yeah. By the way, um, obviously, Jaime is, is Argentinian, South American, and he gets me onto the mate. I've gotten a lot of questions from Irish people saying, is this, is this weird? What, what is this? No, no it's, not weird. It's no just weird tea. That's what I'm saying. It's just tea. Um, yeah. But Jaime got me onto it. Um, if you want to talk a little bit about that, I get a lot of questions so about what the, it is. The, the funny thing was, I think we were up in New York. I or at your <laughs> ankle, and uh, you say like, yeah, um, I got the matter that you told me to get, and blah blah. I say, okay, let me see. So he goes in and pours like a whole glass of water, and then like just a little bit of the of the tea on top of it. And I'm like, what are you doing? No, 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 no. I only had a little bit left, so I tried to make do of what I had. But I laughed so much. Finally, showed me how to prepare it. Showed me how to how to do it, take care of it so I mean it's something that I would have four or five times a week and I feel good it's, it's yeah. got lots of antioxidants minerals yes. vitamins yes. Um, very, keeps very you good. hydrated it's got caffeine yeah um, so it, it keeps you concentrated so it's something that it's I do very good I and drink it's very a lot. common very common in Argentina and uh, in Europe and other countries I can imagine some of your teammates uh, oh, they the clue. and Blanco. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. They are actually yeah. laughing a little bit. I was telling them, like, I drink mate. They're like, who's this Irish guy? Um, pale, pale as anything, um, <laughs> drinking some mate. So El I had to polo. explain to him. Colo, colo. Can't be colo, yeah. Sun, is that what? Sunshine, is that what it means? What does it mean? Col no, colo is like ginger. Like, ginger, uh, yeah, there you go. That's my, that's my nickname here at Portland Timbers, is, is, is colo. <laughs> uh, all the lads call me ginger in Spanish. So, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. So we can talk about like what you're doing now since you've graduated and you're living in Sweden right yes. now. Yeah, yeah, I'm currently in Sweden where there is no quarantine, so it's actually Good for you. okay. Yeah, um, of course I'm taking care of myself and trying to take all the you know the social distancing and stuff. But Swedish people are already you know very um, clever on that kind of stuff. You know they don't they don't yeah. pile up or anything. Um, so yeah, when I finished my career there at Kaiser, finished four years, I, like I was saying, you know, maybe the first two years, I didn't really like um, uh, appreciate how the football, you know, I didn't take everything out of it. So I felt that I had a lot more to give uh, after um, I graduate. So I started finding a new opportunity to go, to, to keep playing. So this opportunity, thanks to some contact through my girlfriend, that she's Swedish and some friends, I got tryouts in different clubs in Sweden, uh, which is, that's something very important as well to mention that you can be lucky, of course, I mean, you deserve it, but to play MLS, to stay in Sweden and in the US, but you can also play abroad after college. So yeah. that was my situation. Um, I went to play in a city called Link Shopping, uh, very talented group. You know, we were lucky enough to get promoted. So we went up a division and, you know, I started working there as well and everything. 
uh, but when I graduated, we, uh, me and my my good friend and partner also Martin Lozano, you know him. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of requests from players that maybe they were at bad schools or that they were sent for the different agencies or we had coaches saying like, hey, we want more Argentinians. And then we had players that are asking for help. So we, we started helping players transferring from schools, you know, um, and then we said, okay, I think we have enough players, you know, to maybe, I don't know, put that, like set up a showcase down in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And... And that's how we went. We started a show because we were very unsure what was going to happen, but we were very clear about one thing. We, we knew what we lived, you know, we knew what we were talking about because we lived the experience and we were absolutely sure of what we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to help them players yeah. proceed. You know, we wanted to, we saw ourselves in those players that got like, um, they, they did it, got out of contract at big clubs, you know, that they were supposed to be big talents that they told them that they were going to be professionals. And then we, we are sick of seeing players like at 20, 19 years old that they, and, and this is not to dishonor any profession, you know, but they ended up doing stuff that, you know, maybe if they could have got the chance to have a college degree or something, they would have yeah. maybe a little bit more, on, I don't like to say honor job, but I mean, something that they, they wanted to do, you know, and not they yeah, being forced yeah. to just get money and, and. Okay. Like that. So, so let's, let's start talking about that now. So what, basically you're doing right now so you started your own company called sports studio with yeah. you and your best friend martin um who also played um college yes um, soccer for martin. four years it's we actually sport, played against them yeah mm, it's a sports and talent studio which is the same and, sports and talent uh, studio yeah and yeah i started with martin he played we actually played him like you said we played him yeah. in your he's first a good player team. yeah he was good a good player, player. actually yeah. in his highlight video he has some plays against you there <laughs> that he gets to, yeah, yeah, he gets to, it puts you in ridicule. But um, and then he went to play in New York to LIU Post. Yeah, uh, and then he finished his career at Barry University, mm -hmm. uh, where they won the national tournament at Division Two. Yeah. So uh, you 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 do you get like a lot of lads from Argentina, obviously over to the states, but you've kind of opened up to other places too, and not just targeting Argentinian guys. You've opened up, I know that you're speaking to some Irish lads too. Um, is there any other people, any other places around the world that you've, you've helped guys, that you're in the process of helping guys? Well, uh, so like I was going to say before, uh, and then we got into another topic, I don't know why, but I mean, when I moved to Sweden, I started doing the same here in Sweden. But it's very common for Swedish players to go to the States yeah. because they get a lot of help from the, from the government and stuff. But yeah. then obviously you and then someone that we're probably going to talk about a very good friend of us alan mccann and um, mm -hmm. he you know through the, the, maybe they contact him or and then they send it to me and um i play with you and uh it's it will be good to find the next malloy as well and many of the <laughs> coaches are there whether you don't like to say it or not many coaches are there asking for the next aaron you know it's a good player to have as well as many other players um but yes it, I'm looking into, uh, so we, we are looking into helping players from as many countries as we can, but we don't do uh, like uh, quanti uh, qu uh, quantity of players. We, we yeah. like to find them quality players that, you know, we can work on and we can provide what the coaches are looking for. We don't and that's why I think, that's why I think Sports Studio is very unique in that way is because a lot of other agencies will take anybody and everybody, take their money, say, oh, we can... Sell, sell, sell those kids a dream and then could yeah. end up in a, a really, really small school in, in Texas or not get anything at all. Yeah. Um, so I think that's very um, good on what you're doing and very selfless, selfless. Yeah. Um, sorry about that, selfless. Um, no, of getting obviously guys over to, to the States that, that are good enough. Um, so yeah, um, I think that's very, very important. Yeah. What we try to tell everyone is like, you know, the States is not all New York, LA, or Miami, you know, you have a Absolutely. lot, the state, it's a beautiful country and you have a lot of good cities, you know, but it's not the same, you know, there are some places I'm not, not going to mention, but you know, just <laughs> looking at the map, you know, like you, you'll see, uh, looking at the surroundings that 
it's nothing against them schools, but you know, for an international student where you go there and if they don't have any internationals on the team or the city is not ready for an international or you have to take five planes to arrive to the place, you know, it's, you know, it makes it very tough, you know, and yeah. if you do it the right way, you know, if they work with the right process at the right time and you talk to the right people, then you can maybe have a completely different experience, you know, completely different experience. And, and I think that can be done with a, a little bit harder work, you know, maybe like you say, maybe some other companies do it and, and I'm okay. You know, everyone does their job and it's, it's all good. Uh, it's just different ways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but th I think there are many places, I don't know, for example, North Carolina, nobody will go on holidays to North Carolina, but North Carolina have probably some of the best schools in the U S yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you have Duke, NC state, UNC, you have so many good programs, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, those, those skills are, are unbelievable. Yeah, exactly. And um, just just touching a little bit on that, on, on the on the process and stuff, we, of course, like you say, we, we try to find the good players. Um, so we usually approach to the players that are, that are already in clubs, those who are prospects to become very good professional players or whatever. Uh, so what we try to tell them is we're not saying that you're not good enough to make it pro. So let's say, I don't know, we grab a, a guy from uh, Boca Juniors, you know, U20, or let's say someone in, in, a, in, a, in a top division in, in Ireland or in England, whatever, you know. Um, it's not that we're saying that you're not going to make it, that you're not going to be professional. We just want to explain to you how tough it is the process and how unfair it can be, you know. Like, yeah. you can have the, the level, you can have the skills, you can have the commitment, but sometimes, unfortunately, in football, it doesn't have to do with you, you know. It's, there are other circumstances. So, Keep fighting for that dream, but let's prepare a plan B just in case it Absolutely. doesn't happen, you know, Absolutely. Uh, where it eventually could become a plan A, you know, because once you know, I don't know, you can expect, well, I, I went to visit you at Penn State and I, I've seen it with my eyes as well, but um, the, the, the treatment that you get at Penn State or those schools, it's nowhere near most of the best clubs, you know, in, in yeah, probably it's, in Argentina actually, or it's Ireland. Hard to it's hard to explain because... Like the facilities at big schools like in Big Ten, or ACC, or whatever it is, <clears throat> like <clears throat> Penn State, we probably have better facilities there than a lot of Premier League teams. And yeah, obviously besides the stadium, obviously the stadium apart, um, like we, it's it's like twenty four seven. We we have contrast baths. We have two big locker rooms. We have every <clears throat> everything you know, need: free gear, uh, free boots. Like, like it's just it, it's amazing. Like all the facilities there, like yeah. three, four gyms you can use depending on what part of campus you are. Um, so the, actually to explain that to people is it, it's difficult at times because people will be looking at you and saying like, "There's no way that that's true." Like, because yeah, when exactly. I actually visited, <laughs> they don't believe you. When I, when, when I came on a visit to Penn State, um, after one hour, I realized I don't want to see any other schools. <laughs> I want to go here because, um the amount of facilities they have, the amount of people, gym instructors, dietitians, um, trainers, all those people just want to help you get better. So it was up to me. If I said to myself, if I spent three years here, there's no way on earth I'm not going to get any better because exactly. everything is there for me. And I got so much better in my three years at Penn State. Um, so yeah, I fell in love with the school after, after one hour of the visit. I didn't want to speak to anyone else. And that's where yeah. I knew I wanted to go. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, and there are so many other schools like that. And, it, and it's like you said, you know, it's up to you, you know, they, they give you everything you need. And even at other schools that, you know, that are not Penn State, you know, there are very good schools as well, maybe a little bit smaller. Of course, Penn State is one of the biggest ones. But, you know, even at Kaiser, for example, of course, it wasn't the fanciest school or it doesn't have, didn't have big stadiums or anything. But we had it. We had a good gym. You know, we had a practice field like uh, we were playing games as well. Now they build a turf field there. Um, yeah. but you know you had a, everything you needed you know it was up to you so um, that, that's what we try to tell the players you know it's you know you can be professional you know but look at this other alternative you know maybe sometimes you know like we always say maybe you're in the reserve team you're about to sign a contract you turn your ACL unfortunately or you break a bone or whatever and then it's over you know and then and yeah. then it's very hard such as young age to realize, you know, to be that tough mentally to say, okay, I'm going to keep going and stuff because your whole dream just events, just boom, it disappeared. So Absolutely. 
we we try to encourage that, you know, and 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 keep showing all the time that the college level it's a very very good level, very good. Yeah, level. absolutely, absolutely. Now thinking back to going back to obviously your your agency. Um, can you talk about this? I I get a lot of questions about a wife says, "Oh, I want to go to the states. What are the steps I need to do?" And it took me nine months of like of of studying, of getting things sorted to get to the states. It almost took me a year. So, can you explain the steps needed um, to to get to the states if you're starting from scratch? If I decided right now, okay, I want to go to the states. What are the steps needed? Um, so it's it's clear to to lads watching this this video what exactly they need to do. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's start from, you could start by, so I know in, in Ireland, it finish, you finish school with the living cert, right? Yeah. Um, so let's say you can start the process the year before your living cert, you know, um, and that would be great. But then you can also go to the US after your living cert. You know, there are NCAA and NAIA, they have different rules and division one or for NCAA and division two, different rules about it. Um, of course, the younger, uh, like the closer you are from your, from your living cert, you know, the better, you know, that you don't graduate and then you want to go when you're 25 because it's harder to go to division one and it's even harder yeah. to go to division two. Um, but the, the main the main things are you need to prepare for your English exam, uh, which usually for internationals you have two. It's the TOEFL and the SAT. But the TOEFL is for internationals who don't speak English at their home country. So yeah. th that's an advantage for Irish players that they don't have to take uh, the TOEFL. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other exam is the SAT. Now the SAT... Uh, it's extremely important because it's the NCAA who is requiring it. And most of the schools, they do the academic scholarship based on the SAT. Okay. So the academic school, you have two types of scholarships. You have the academic and the athletic and the academic, you have it based on the SAT and your GPA. Which so the, the, GPA the, SAT, the SAT is basically like an entrance exam for college and the better score you get, the more chance of you getting into college and getting scholarship academically. So it's super important. Exactly. Now, you can go to college without doing the SAT. You could do it, but then you will have to start with a junior college or maybe an NAIA school, depending on your own. Uh, there are different, you know, specification for each case, but, you know, the best it will be to take the SAT so you have all of the chances available, you know, that you can go yeah. straight to NCAA if you have the talent and if you can do it. Um, and you can so, take the SAT as many times as possible too. Like, it's not just once and that's it. Like, I think no, exactly. in Ireland, it's every three weeks to a month when I did it four years ago. Um, so, I mean, if you take it six months before you go to the States, you take it six times, you just give your best score and better chance of, receiving any, 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 yeah. any I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure how it is in Ireland. I will guess it's the same as because the, the SAT internationally is kind of the same all over the world where you have five times a year, you know, so okay. yeah. um, you can take it as many times as you want and you can combine the scores as well, which is excellent. <clears throat> and so, you know, the fact that you only have five chances, you know, and one of the first chance is in March, next one is in May, then you have, um, October, November, and December. So, you know, if you're looking into going into college in August, you know, for the fall, uh, it will be best, you know, if you if you take it um, the de December on the December before that, you know. So it will be mm -hmm. like ending the fall semester. Okay, yeah. so December. So then you have six months to uh, like actually talk to schools and stuff. So yeah, okay. it um, it's a bit of a tough exam because it has math and like critical reading, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, you trust know. me, trust me. Yeah. I know. I had to, I had to get some tutors for for math, so it took yeah. six weeks of tutors. So I um, can imagine it's something um, that I definitely needed to do. Yeah, but but it's uh, something that I tell everyone. It's it's some effort, you know, that you just need to put your butt on the chair, you know, and, yep. and it's all worth it. It's all worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You can get so much just from one test. Um, so that, and then we also do, um, so that's the, 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 let's say the academic part with your GPA, which is the average of your living cert. Mm -hmm. uh, the higher, the better. 
And, and then there comes with the athletic part that the, we build a profile based on your football career. We do highlight uh, video, we do video analysis with the player, and then we edit it um, to put it together. So we come up with a profile. Now, um, for example, on, on, the athletic, on, the, on the football part, if, if we can come up with a great footage and, and, and good um, video and everything, we we can get coaches come and watch you play live, you know, and see yeah. your training and meet your family, um, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, which we so have So what you do before. is you'd build a highlight tape, build a resume, CV for that player. You send it around to all the coaches that you know, let's say all the, let's say there's 10 skills looking for a sentiment filler. Exactly. And the guy from Ireland's a sentiment filler. You send them the highlight tape, the resume, the CV, the whole exactly. lot. Say, hey, we've got this guy want him to come to college, come check him out. And then he would fly to Ireland and see the player live. Um, exactly. a highlight tape. Um, it, it's and, totally different. Yeah, of course. It's totally different because on a highlight video, everyone looks good. So yeah. something, <clears throat> something that I want to really emphasize on is I don't have the key to the US. Nobody, there is no agency, no agent that it's going to be. Many will tell you that they do, that it's because <laughs> of them that you go on the stage, but it's all up to the players, you know, and the effort that they put in. But the difference is that most of the coaches, if not all of them, they have their own pipelines, you know, where they, they trust the people who they, they, they get players from. So I think that would be the, the, the big thing about this, you know, that you might need help because coaches <clears throat> receive hundreds of emails a day, you know, and they never know. So yeah. That's, that's the thing when it comes important, maybe my job, and then as well, preparing the paperwork and stuff. Um, but then another great thing that could happen as well is that, let's say they come and watch you play, they like you, and like you said, you want to visit Penn State, they can do that, you know, they can pay for your visit and you go to the school. Um, and then, so you actually can see with your own eyes, you know, and... Mm -hmm. So we, we just had a player, so we did a showcase in Argentina in February before all the corona blew up. Mm -hmm. So we were like lucky actually. Um, and we had a striker, very humble guy. He started the whole, the whole process one year before the showcase where we gave him all the material to work on the SATs, on the TOEFL, preparing, et cetera, et cetera. So actually Dan Stratford, that he's the current coach at West Virginia, came down to watch him and he liked him so much that the week after, the kid went on a visit just for the weekend, for all the way from Argentina Amazing. to West Virginia. Yeah. So I remember talking to him. This was early March, so not so long ago. Uh, I remember talking to him, and he was like, oh, my God, I don't want to leave. Can I start studying yeah. now? It was like it just, so. It just opens your eyes. Opens your yeah. West Virginia is, is such an amazing school. Like, yeah. Like, with, with everything, really, like, especially soccer, too. Exactly. Um, yeah. they're, they're always up there, so. I'm sure the guy coming from Argentina to actually seeing this whole different world is really, really open to us. Exactly. And, and I want to be very clear on this. It's not going to be that everyone is going to pay for your visit and that you're going to go to every school. It's not going to be the normal process, you know. If yeah. you're good enough and you have the grades and then you, 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 um, you meet all the requirements, then it can happen. But it's not that, everyone, that you're going to be yeah. always fine there. Um, but one more thing I want to touch on the academic profile, why it's so important is because, as you know it as well, uh, the coaches give you both academic and athletic scholarship. You know, they can give both. So if you have a very good academic profile, then they'll need to put less of their budget, you know, to, to recruit you and give you as much scholarship possible. So the players need to understand as well that as well as they go to scout in Ireland, they come to Argentina, they go to Ghana, they go to Japan, they go to France, Germany, they go all over the world. So and there are very good players all over the world as well. So if they Absolutely. find a center mid that is as good as you, but has a better academic, you know, they will need to put less money to get him. So yeah. that's why it's so important, the academic part. We focus yeah, on the football, but the academic is important. Absolutely, because the school can give you academic money, but the team only has a certain amount of money they can give to each player exactly. um, for athletically wise. So that's what I'm saying. It's very, it's very important to, 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 yeah. to study beforehand and stuff. So... After the highlight tape is done, after the SAT and the TOEFL is done, um, what what is what's the next step? Is it just waiting around? Is it um, well, we, contacting, or is, is that when you come in and then that's when you you start 
Bastion some context of and well we start before we start when uh, before they took they take the exams and before the video we start working already you know like providing all the information they need and once we have the profile ready and uh, usually the first thing we do is the highlight video because you know the, the exam can take up to four five six months to prepare or maybe less depending on the case um but uh, yeah, once we have that footage, you know, we started communicating with the coaches and telling them like, look, we have this kind of players. So then they start communicating with the family so the player can actually talk to them and actually get the real good sense of yeah. what is he going to be dealing with, you know. So and then after that, you know, try to compare all the possibilities possible, uh, all the possibilities only available, uh, hopefully many offers. And then it's a, we, we give our own um, uh, thoughts about each yeah. offer and each school. We try to be very objective as well, and and then it's uh, it's up to them to to choose as well. Um, That's awesome. We all... Yeah. So then then off they go. Four years of their four years yeah. of, of a great time in college. Exactly. Both like yeah. on and off the field. And, so. and we we tell them, you know, like it can be one year, two years, three years. You know, take it time by time, little by little, and then you you will see if you progress. Because we know that once you're there, you love it. You know. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So that's perfect. So I think that everyone that's kind of wanting to go over to the States, um, that's a great insight of, of what you need to do um, to get on top of things early. Um, so yeah, that, that's great. So let's, let's, let's push on. Uh, let's talk about um, what soccer player you, you looked up to growing up as a kid, obviously being from Argentina and then being very successful, having some amazing players. I'll say without a doubt, I don't even have to think Can about it. Can I guess? You can guess. All right. All right. Is it a uh, um, player that you played a 10 role? You cried when you met him? Uh, uh, is it Raquel May? You there knew me. Go. You knew, yeah, yeah. You're cheating <laughs> because you knew this. So, yeah, yeah definitely Juan Roman Riquelme. Um, for me, it was absolutely class, you know. And, and I think you have a story about Riquelme as well that you, that you can tell. Maybe your dad. Oh yeah, yeah. Me, obviously, um, my dad played. He played in the U twenty ones World Cup. Um, I think he was nineteen at the time, and I he I knew we played against some amazing players. Amazing. He told me the story years ago, and, and I forgot um, that he played against Raquel May, and he was saying he was probably the best player he's ever he's ever played against. But what brought it up was Jaime was playing a five side like a kickabout, yeah. And he texts me and goes, "Guess who I bumped into?" Well, Jaime's crying, tears <laughs> of joy. Um, he sent me a picture of him and, and Raquel May, which was unbelievable. So Jaime actually played a five-a-side. Were you against Raquel May on his, on his team? No, he, he, he was part of like, uh, it was different teams there, you know, and, and I didn't get to, to play against him or anything, but he was just next to me, you know. And yeah. uh, I wouldn't dare to take a picture with him. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to alone at, at all because I, I didn't want to bother him, you know. Yeah. Um. So one of my, my teammates there, he was like, come on, you're going to miss the chance of your life. You know, you're never going to get this guy here like this. Like, yeah. no, I don't want to bother him. I'm, I'm just glad, like, I'm overwhelmed now, you know? And, uh, yeah. and then he goes and my friend goes and says like, hey, Riquelme, he wants to take a picture with you. I'm like, oh, uh, okay. So, it just goes uh, to show the sort of person you are. Like, you're such a humble guy. You put everyone for you. So it's, it's, it's great to say, but I'm glad you got the picture because now you oh, get to yeah. keep it in and actually, for the rest of your I'm, life. Yeah, he played most of his career. He played at Boca Juniors. You know, that's when he did the, the best, I guess. And also yeah. in Villarreal in Spain. But um, I'm not a Boca Juniors fan, but I will just go to the stadium. I'll try the best I can to get tickets just to watch him. Just it was such him. a joy. You know, he, yeah. well, we, we spoke a lot about football before. And, you know, it's like he, he was two, three steps ahead of everyone else. Yeah. Pure class. You know, he saw things that nobody did. You know, some through passes that nobody could do, you know, and then it's unbelievable. he was aware of everything, you know. And yeah. So, yeah, it's... Well, that's, that's great. That's, that's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, so so going, going, going from there, you can choose your best five-a-side team um, ever of all of the players, past, present. Um, I want to know who, who you got. Start so, from the goalkeeper, work your way up. Yeah, so from goalkeeper... I think I'll go with a modern one. I think I'm gonna go with um, uh, Ter Stegen. Yeah. I think he's he's fantastic. 
he's a phenomenal mm-hmm. player. Like he, yeah. he's, he's a he's a footballer. You know, he can play center back, he can play <laughs> center mid, and he will steal the ball. You know. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. He's a great player. Uh, so I'll I'll go with Ter Stegen, and and then you know me. I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm gonna put much defensive, but think I'll go with um, absolutely. Riquelme has to be there. Okay. Uh, so I'll put Sidan in. What a Obviously. play! Obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, I, of course, there is no doubt I'm gonna have to put Messi, best player in the history, probably. Well, okay. I, I didn't, I didn't get to watch Maradona much, so I don't know. I, I, but I don't like to compare them, you know. So yeah, I'll go with um, yeah, Ter Stegen, Riquelme, Sidan, Messi, and then one more. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go with, uh, yeah, with Maradona. Nobody, Maradona no, no defending, nothing at all. Just pure, yeah. We'll what never lose the ball, you know. We'll never lose squad. the ball. Yeah. Just thinking how hard that would be. Like you just pulling your hair out, so frustrating. Unbelievable. Uh, it's, it's players that uh, that they've done. Like they, they, their history. You know, the things they've yeah. done. That the control they have with the ball, the awareness they had. Everything is just like you. I, I could watch. Hours and hours and hours. But if you Absolutely. have to choose, which one would you? Uh, me, uh, uh, turn around to me now. <laughs> ah. Come on, people want to know as well. You know, okay. they're listening to you. They're not listening to me. So my captain, I'll put. I'll start off with my captain. Obviously, you you got Raquel, mate. I'll put. Um, I'll put Paul Scholes in there. I knew as, that was as the captain. Um, goalkeeper, goalkeeper. Uh, probably, I'll just put the hay in there. Just goal stopping all day. Yeah. Goal, not, not, nothing with his feet. Just goal stopping. I can smell. I can smell a Manchester United fan <laughs> here. <laughs> and then at the back, you you just want someone that will just it's just all in. You know what I mean? Will put that face in front See, of the See, that's the difference between you and I. I just like classy football. I don't need no, any. One, of that. one at the back. You need one at the back. I'll have Nemanja Vidic that will absolutely Oof. up and anyone. So Nemanja Vidic at the back, and then I'll have two. Two players that will be around Vidic and goals. Two goal scorers probably. I'd probably put probably Messi and Ronaldo just just for goals. Just, just win games. You know what I mean? But I have Messi, but you cannot clone them. You cannot have two of them. Ronaldinho, so you... Ronaldinho, Ronaldinho, oh, Ronaldo. What a player! Go. Just just gonna just gonna get goals. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, what I think player. that's a a very a very strong team. Um, yeah. So yeah, Vidic, for... Vidic, then your twin as a captain. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah, false goal. Just passing. Just one, oh, two is all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then going on to your best 11 aside team that you have played with. Um, so I know you might get a few text messages off of a few lads. Well, uh, like, like I said, I, I mean, I've been lucky to share some teams over in Argentina, uh, in the US, and also in Sweden. Um, mm-hmm. But it's not, I don't know if I. I haven't played at the, such a great level, but I mean, oof, as a goalkeeper, I'll go with uh, one of my best friends that we played in a, like an regional team. That there's going to be a lot of names that you have no clue here, and that that's people fine, won't that's know. Fine. That's fine. That's totally fine. Um, so I'll go with uh, Jeronimo Lopez, uh, one of my very very good friends that I know him since we are three years old. Or yeah. as well, um, we had a we had a goalkeeper at uh, Kaiser once. Uh, Mark Dawson, that I think he's he was a very good goalkeeper when when he when he was playing. Um, then as a right back, I'll go with um, Lukas Kusevic. He played for PBA actually, mm-hmm. Chilean Chilean right back, unreal player. So good, so technical, so fast, really very aggressive. You know, very offensive minded, very good player. Um, then as two center backs, I'm going to go with uh, Pontus Rodin. He's a young Swedish guy that I played with my first season here in, in Sweden. That um, He was starting at my team at the age of, I think he was 16. Uh, and he was starting a phenomenal play. And then the year after, he went to the, um, uh, he, another club, uh, bought him. Mm-hmm. And then when he turned, like he played that season. And then when he turned 18... And Al Svenskan team, which is the highest division in Sweden, they bought him Elski Stuna. Um, unfortunately, they got relegated because he only played like a few games. Uh, but now he's there. He's 
great, great, great player. And he's only 18 years old. So it's class. I'm, I don't know. I will say that he could have some international cups in the near future. Mm-hmm. Um, as another center back, of course, I'm going to have to put Alan McCann. There you uh, go. That leader. Was, Absolute leader. leader. Definitely leader. He's going to be my captain. Um, I was very lucky to play with him. Uh, we got some very good memories. You know, he will, he will, uh, he will do things that many other people are not willing to. You know, he will take mm-hmm. that risk. He, we're very good friends, and 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 I was so happy and so glad I could play with him. You know, yeah. beating teams in national tournament um, when we were, you say the underdogs. You know, we. Mm-hmm. So uh, long story short, we were playing uh, Rio Grande, which was the top seeded in the NAIA, the national tournament, and the banquet the night before we played. Uh, they were everyone presenting the teams, you know, and everyone, everyone's record was like 18 wins, 17 wins, you know, one loss, two losses, like everyone like that. And then they presented us and we were like eight, seven or something like that. We didn't do good, but we were hosting the tournament. Yeah. So everyone started, when, when we came up, everyone laughed, you know, you could hear everyone like, who are these guys? So the, the day after we played um, Rio Grande and they came up all cocky and everything. And we beat them three two on overtime, which was yeah. unbelievable memory. You know? I remember, I remember, yeah. I remember the story. I, I think I heard it from ten different people. So it's, it's. I know, I know, because it's. I mean, it would have been better to win the national tournament, but just having that yeah. memory, you know, it's, it's something that I will always carry with me. Um, mm-hmm. And then as a left back, I'm gonna put someone from that team, uh, Toby Wolf Nulle. He's a German guy. He came crazy. He came as a, I think he was working in Germany for Volkswagen or something like that. And they sent him to do an MBA at Kaiser. And he said, oh, you have a football team? Yeah. Do you think I can try out? Yeah, sure. Let me, let me speak to my coach. And he came in, tried out. German, like huge left back. <laughs> what a player he was. There you and go. He, was, he, he wasn't even planning on coming, but he was playing for a big club back in Germany. Uh, yeah, yeah. Great, great player. And then do I have to put me or not? On the you the can start. put you if, if you're one of the best players you've played with, you can put no, you on it. No, 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 then definitely not. Uh, then, um, I'm gonna put you, of course, as a holding mid. Definitely, there we go. Uh, thank you. It's been a pleasure you. to play with you. Um, <laughs> very talented player. There was no doubt that you were gonna make it to the, to the MLS. You know, when, when I was watching the draft and we knew that you were, you already knew that you were that it was gonna happen, I, I had no doubts that that was gonna happen. It, it didn't surprise me. So yeah, yeah. thank you to you. Um, and then I'm going to put another player that I didn't actually share a team or a, or a, or a squad, but we played together a couple of games um, in like a friend, like it was a sun, like a kind of a Sunday league, but they will pay us to play uh, yeah. and the, the owners, they will bet. So it's Dudu Cruz. He's a Brazilian guy. He actually is still living in the U S um, he was the he played for Belhaven, won national tournament of NAIA. Then he went and coached at PBA as well. So we met there when I was at Kaiser PBA and Kaiser are right next to each other. Yeah. Um, unbelievable player. His touch, his time, his tempo, everything is so much class, so much class. So that then I will put. Um, so well, you played against him, Tommy Greco, Thomas Greco. I was about to say, I was about to say, I was about the Greco brothers. I mean, oh, no, exactly. Those players are, so, are um, out of this world. Yeah, well, I, I didn't get to play with them, but when I when I was at, on a tryout, that tryout that I went when I was finishing high school at that club, they were playing for them. So I can say that I share some training session with them. So I'm gonna put both go. of them absolutely there. So um, one of the ten and one of the left mid. Whatever they want. Okay, there you, you know, go. With, with you, Dudu, and them, you know, like, I, and, and I'm not going to have just, you know me, I don't have a one strike or anything. I like a lot yeah. of rotation. Rotations, a lot of, yeah. I like a lot of good feet in my team, you know, like uh, that they can play the ball, you know, that all of these players that I'm mentioning can pass into someone on the same jersey every time, 10 out of 10. And that for me yeah. is, you know. Um, and then some other one that he was... Uh, from that team, from the Grecos at the club at Platense, is a guy that I know. Um, it's called Bautista Merlini. He's winger. He's a joke. When he was back in the youth level, he's a joke. So he made his debut. Play. He's he's a professional player at the moment. Uh, he's the number ten for uh, one of the best Paraguayan clubs. Uh, play for San Lorenzo in Argentina. Crazy player. 
Um, so there I have, I have uh, four. You got two more. One more. One more, right? Yeah, one more. One more. Oof. I don't know. It has to be someone more like a striker, I guess. Um, I'll put... I think you met him as well. Theo Stamatopoulos. Yeah, yeah. El Bambino. Me, English, good friend, me and Theo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. English, English friend. Man. He's also Greek, I think, with his, his last name, Stamatopoulos. He, he was a very good uh, finisher. Uh, yeah. He, the, he, his goal was, the goal was always in his mind. You know, as soon as he saw opportunity, he would put it in the back of yeah. the net. Great player. He's, he's going to love this. He's going to love this. He has been in this squad. I mean, he's going to send, gonna... send you a letter. He is thanking you. It's a big thing I'm doing for him, you know, but I don't know yeah, if yeah. I can come across any, any, any good, good strikers. I don't know. Yeah, he could strike I... a ball well. I, I remember kicking a bell with him a few yeah. times over good when I was finish. in Florida. Yeah, good yeah. Finish. So that, that's, a, that's a squad right there. And he's, he's arrogant, he's cocky, you know, and he, that's something you need as well as a, as a yeah. forward. So, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so perfect. I just want to, that's the, the end of the episode too. I just want to say thank you very much for, for coming on and, and where can people find you? You can put the name of your social media um, yeah. here and your company. Yeah, of course. So at in, you, know, you can find us on Instagram, which is at sports T studio. Um, there you can send us a message or you, there you will have a WhatsApp numbers as well that you can shoot up a message or the website is www.sportstalentstudio.com. Um, or you can as well, I don't know, send an email to uh, info at sportsandtalentstudio.com or, well, you can contact us, I guess, through your channel. It will be good if they subscribe yeah. or whatever. They send us Definitely. a message. I'm going to put, gonna put the links below um, at the end of this video in the description. Um, but, yeah, and my page is kicking da and da streaming. Um, and my personal page is armaloy10 on Instagram. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for, for coming along and thanks again, Jaime. Um, of course, it's been a my pleasure. pleasure. All right. My pleasure.